Get the views now of Martin Underhill, former police crime commissioner and indeed senior detective with Sussex Police in the Sarah Payne uh, inquiry. Joining us once more, Martin, thank you for uh, your time. Um, one reflects now with all the politicians joining in the discussion on this, it's going to be perhaps less than helpful for Lancashire Police. Yes, um, of course, our, our thoughts go to Nicola's family and friends. Uh, but you're right, this is unhelpful for Lancashire Police. Um, and of course, we now uh, know, well, we're pretty sure that this is Nicola in the river. Um, I think what Keir Starmer's just said is true. It's something I've been saying for two weeks. There, there are questionable decisions that have been made in this case, but they may well be justifiable. And actually, we do need an external force to review the investigation, the media strategy, which has attracted most attention, yeah. um, the TikTok detectives that we've never seen before. Um, and now, of course, the question's being asked about how was Nicola missed in the river, um, bearing in mind um, it, it wasn't a tidal river, it wasn't flying that fast. People are a bit surprised that she's suddenly uh, been found less than a mile from where she went missing. So there yeah. are quite a few questions, um, uh, and Lanc Lancashire Police are under the spotlight. And, and just to bring up that issue of, of TikTok, social media and, and the media involvement itself, of course, when you um, were involved in the, in the Sarah Payne investigation, um, social media not as prevalent and, and certainly not as aggressive, but you still had to have a relationship with the media. Uh, and in those, those days, I guess there was um, a, a conduit, if you like, between detectives and reporters uh, so that they were aware of some information, even though they were asked not to put it into the public domain. Yes, it's interesting how the Leveson inquiry is suddenly featured uh, in today's news. A lot of people, a lot of police officers are arguing that since Leveson, um, they don't contact the press as much as they used to and the relationship doesn't exist. Arguably, the press should be independent from the police. So there's two sides to that argument, Mark. Yeah. But the point is, the TikTok detectives, and I have said this for a while, they filled the landscape. They made the noise because the police didn't. The police should have owned that landscape. They should have been doing press briefings every day because yeah. they didn't. Social media, some toxic social media, and TikTok detectives took over. And my worry is that policing UK now has to deal with this template the next time we have a high-profile missing person. So I totally right. support the star around the home sector and saying we do need to, to learn the lessons. Uh, and actually... I'm not convinced the IOPC is the right body. It needs an external force. Metropolitan Police have already offered to help to, to review this in a completely objective way um, uh, and let the Bully family grieve the tragic loss of Nicola. Indeed, because one, one of the central questions, I guess, would be uh, in terms of the logistics of the police operation, which an independent uh, outside force would look at, uh, in that we spoke to Bob Eastwood earlier, former chief superintendent in Lancashire, his understanding uh, that there was no um, kind of communication between Lancashire and this independent diving team that came in uh, to search the river with their sonar equipment. Now, as a former uh, senior detective, how do you view that and, and the fact that they were let loose, if you like, on the river to um, actually look at, at areas where may have direct um, evidence of, of what happened? Well, again, another lesson to be learned. Um, and I support what Bob said. What I've heard from people at the scene is that um, the search team came in because the family asked them to come in and the police don't own the river. Um, but actually, it's quite staggering to think that happened. And of course, we know that the search team are complaining they weren't properly briefed by the police. So um, I think we have to bring in some guidelines as to who searches where. Certainly with Sarah Payne, I had 13 ologists. I had the RAF doing fly pasts, trying to find grave sites. Um, and everything was done with our knowledge and, uh, and mainly at our request. Um, right. So there are numerous lessons to be learned here. But of course, it doesn't take away the fact poor old Nicola, uh, we think, is going to be confirmed to be dead today. Yeah, obviously that, that formal identification yet to take place, we, we don't know that. But la last thought for you, and that is that very early on they were indicating they did not think this was a criminal investigation. And that did bring a, a lot of reaction from the public. Uh, was, was that a mistake that perhaps they should have said openly, you know, we are just treating it as we get the evidence and, and, and finding out what's gone on? Well, as we know, because we've all lived this journey with the Bully family, um, we, there are seven scenarios as to what happened to Nicola, and those seven scenarios still stand. Lancashire Police closed down six of them three days into the inquiry. 
Um, I am still staggered by that, as are numerous other people watching from the outside. Yeah. Um, and of course, by shutting down the other lines of inquiry, um, they could have arguably missed some evidence. So uh, an inquiry further down the line um, will establish what went right and what went wrong. I, I, there's no doubt in my mind that an awful lot of dedicated professional officers in Lancashire Police try yeah. to resolve this issue. But we have to accept mistakes were made. Martin, as ever, thank you for joining us on GB News. Uh, Martin Underhill, former uh, senior detective and uh, police crime commission too. Thank you very much indeed.